Hello, my name is Te. I read the third edition on the book Ethnography, Principles in Practice by Martin Amersley and Paul Atkinson. Even though there is a fourth, but um, I had access to this. I read on a PDF, so I'm not going to show you the book. <laughs> I didn't have it. A friend of my advisor sent me the recommendation. She's actually also a colleague in the project You Sound, which is a project on music and migrants, especially refugees and the rage. So if you want to check it out, I'm actually trying to do the website, even though I'm not very familiar with that. But um, yay. <laughs> About the book, this is the main theme of the day. The point of the book is telling us that the ethnography is like um, everyday life, in a way that uh, the point is to meet people and to understand them. Actually, this is part of the point, uh, because the ethnography is both the book and um, the process, and uh, in the end you, you are supposed to have a book, a, a, an ethnography, and um, so it's not just meeting the people, you need to do something beside that, but yay. The idea is that, um, like in everyday life, you compromise, you tell something about uh, yourself, uh, you listen, and uh, sometimes you lie too. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes other people lie to you. Like in everyday life, you never know the true, the whole true, the, um, the one... <laughs> <laughs> the one true... There is not, no such thing as the one true. I guess you will know that by now. Let's go to the first chapter. There it's called What is Ethnography? And um, yes, et ethnography... Usually uh, we define the ethnography by the method, which is going to the field and taking notes, uh, looking to people, um, and then um, studying a few cases, but very deeply. So it's kind of the opposite of um, surveys, in where you don't get what people think, but you also get a lot of information, so there is points in favor and uh, against the both methods. Actually, I think they are kind of complementary, because ethnography makes you understand how people act, think, uh, reflect on their own actions. Uh, it's very deep, deep. There is two currents. The first one is positivism. Positivism thinks of doing ethnography and social science as doing uh, natural science. So you have an experiment and you test that uh, experiment. The thing about um, experiments with people is, on the other hand, sometimes they can be a little bit anedic and the other people no, don't act like uh, objects. You can't do the same tests and expect the same result as you have with physical loss. People are unpredictable. For example, imagine that you have a friend and you ask that person one thing on one day and then you ask that same question like two years after that same person might give you another different answer because people change. People think about what they did in the past and they decided to go to different routes. And, or not, maybe they might be in the same route but they woke up in a different mood so they answer it in a different way. All of this is valid and all of this is very real in ethnography. Yeah, it's not doing an experiment and expecting the same result often and after, uh, so the result is valid, that not, doesn't happen with people. I'm not a big enthusiastic of positivism and the authors either. Then we have naturalism, that's uh, where ethnography goes into. The idea of naturalism is that you go to st study people in their environment, in, unlike the natural science, when you study the, the subject in a laboratory kind of way. In ethnography, you go to the people, to their environment, to understand uh, them better, to see how they act naturally. <laughs> it would be great if uh, people could act naturally 
even though someone is looking at them, the camera is looking at them. I'm not acting naturally because I'm looking to a camera, so I don't feel I'm being very natural. I, I, although I try, and that's the point of the book. You, if you are a researcher, uh, ethnographer, and you go with your camera gear and you and your notes in the other hand and look at people, sit there and beside them and start taking notes, they will not act naturally. But there is ways to arrive there. Or I think the goal is not. To, build, to find the complete natural environment, but to understand that we'll never be a complete uh, natural environment. I think it's trying to get there. So you're trying to get people a little bit by a little bit more uh, natural with you, more confident in you. The first uh, chapter also talks about um, the idea of a militant anthropology which um, means that the research will be openly ideologic. So you will do a, a research with a purpose, an ideological purpose, a political purpose, and that is very common uh, in the anti-racist research and the feminist research, because during a lot of years uh, the perspective was the white, uh, middle to upper class uh, man. So if you want to change that, sometimes you have to get political. Uh, the authors don't sympathize with that too much because they think that the purpose of the research is not uh, to change the world uh, politically, but uh, to improve the knowledge of the world. I think maybe their perspective is a little bit conditioned by the fact they are both white men, so maybe it's that. <laughs>